All right, what's up, everybody? So we are going to take a look at what you can see. The industrial park. There's been some news that's come out of here recently in the last, I don't know, 10 days or so about what's going on. Now, I keep seeing these birds, or I kept seeing these birds, the rosette, rosette spoonbill. And uh, these spoonbills are not very common. They kind of look like flamingos. We saw them and we thought they might be flamingos. So I got a closer look. We Googled them and uh, usually they're like Sarasota or South, but you can see these dinosaur looking things. Pretty cool. They have pink, pink feathered wings and things like that. If you see them at the lakes and ponds around inside the villages, let me know. I didn't, I've never seen anything like that before and they're pretty rare apparently. So we're taking a look at the industrial park. Like I said, this is the Northeast corner so far. Uh, they just made a bunch of improvements to this area and they used that $6 million grant that was uh, provided for them from governor DeSantis. They created a road is a one and a half mile expansion, which we will take a look at in a little bit all the way to uh, 301 and it goes now over I-75 um, and it, it's a, a two lane road. They also added a turn lane off of 301, uh, both on the eastern, or not on the eastern side, the western side of the road to turn, like if you're headed south to turn in. And they added a lane in the middle to turn left into here if you're headed north. This is DZ Concrete. They are the ones that do all the pre-built walls. If you haven't seen this, um, it's pretty amazing. They line up these trailers, the trucks pull in, they take, they take the trailers out to the new areas for construction. There's a lot of companies coming in here to the industrial park and it's continuing to grow. They now have multiple because this is the Rick Scott Industrial Park. And then you also have the O'Toole Industrial Park. Um, and that area is named after Marlene O'Toole. She just passed away, uh, I believe this year. Yes, this year. Uh, she passed away in January. She was 78 years old. She was the Florida was a Florida House of Representative for eight years and um, she worked a lot on education job creation she was 78 when she passed away her name is on the uh, one of the industrial parks as well as the other one and the other one is called Monarch Ranch so they went ahead, they changed the railroad spur crossing as well. So the crossing that goes into the area, which we just flew over, uh, you see all the, the train cars full of rock and raw materials coming in. They just had a ribbon cutting, cutting ceremony uh, probably about 10 days ago, a week ago or so on June 6th with uh, Romac, DZ Corporation, The Daily Sun, uh, PG Sola LLC, and Coleman City Council, Jim Spears, State Representative John Temple, and a, a slew of other Sumter County Commissioners for the ribbon cutting ceremony. And that was to open that new road which we're looking at right here this is that new road that comes off of 301 it's supposed to streamline everything and make it uh, a lot easier for the dump trucks to get in and out and deliver those materials this is that industrial park drive below us is that railroad crossing this project cost 6.95 million dollars and this road goes all the way to 75. You'll be able to see it here in a minute. But it's pretty interesting. You have the Village's Daily Sun over here and many of the bigger areas. There's another uh, angle for you. 
Now we're going to take a look at Middleton. There's some news about Middleton as well. And we're going to look at that right after we get done with this industrial park here. So pretty nice area. It is going to change very shortly. I can 100% guarantee you. This is uh, that road that goes 275 and has that overpass over the top. Judging by the two lanes that go into that road, I would say by the time this area is filled up with um, industry and businesses, that that overpass will be definitely widened and maybe even an exit. Who knows? You never know these days. So with that being said, we're going to look at Middleton, which is actually in the top right of this video. And uh, there's some some news coming up with that as well. And south of that, some new areas. All right. So we're starting out down in basically downtown Middleton. And this is where you're going to see all the retail and all that kind of stuff um, coming in, all the stores that one in the lower left hand corner there is the coffee shop with the drive through which doesn't seem to be open we're going to take a look at the entrance a little bit later right now we're going to go over the school i'll show you the square but uh just released today actually i saw this on villagesnews.com there's a large development plan south of this area and coleman which middleton is actually right across uh this, right across the street from coleman prison so there's a large reg residential and commercial development planned south of 301 and road 470 in sumterville and that's the uh, old florida springs development would be uh south of coleman federal prison just a few miles south of this area maybe uh, maybe two or three now this area we're flying over right now, this is the high school by the way. That area we were flying over is this right here. This is kind of interesting because this is the downtown square in Middleton. They're gonna have pep rallies and things like that, but also live entertainment. And then this is the uh, Villages Charter High School right here that we're flying around. So this area that they are going to be uh, putting in the plans are calling for 816 multifamily housing units, 1.2 million square feet of commercial and industrial space, and 100,000 square feet of self-storage. Can't get enough of those, am I right? A total of 525 units would be added to a recreational vehicle park that's already on the site. All of this is coming off of villagesnews.com, by the way. Uh, the, it's 276 acres and um, it includes an archaeological site uh, recorded in 2016 in the northwest part so they're going to be looking at that they they have uh, historical resources survey and preliminary endangered habitat assessment when of course they're going to avoid the wetlands and the floodplain areas uh, they'll probably move a lot of dirt around is what i'm guessing that way they can uh, go ahead and build on it they do that a lot and this whole area the middleton area and pretty much i mean eastport a lot of it is low lying areas and um and and i mean wetlands basically so this area here k through eight uh, that is that big building there. Middleton, the housing areas have not really, uh, I guess, filled up like I thought they would have already. Uh, I haven't been out here in quite some time doing a video like this for Middleton, but I thought there would be more houses than there are. Um, now, this school, the Wildwood Commissioners just rejected a plan to provide crossing guards uh, for the village's charter schools so that's both of these the middle school elementary which is that one building and then the high school they lost a bid for crossing guards now the police chief estimated that it would cost around one hundred and seventy six thousand dollars to provide 14 crossing guards and uh, that would in 
include two alternates. Guards would be provided for Wildwood schools also. And that would be $1,500 an hour plus contributions to the Florida retirement system and $3,200 in equipment. Uh, this is also on Villages News, just so you know. Now, the thing about the school guards is they wanted the county to pay for them, but it also uh, provides a safe, secure way for the kids to get to school. And apparently what the, uh, the sheriff is saying is that, or the police chief, excuse me, is that once the sidewalks and everything's built out in Middleton, it could cost up to another $100,000 more. Now, obviously, that would be the county paying for it, and that would come from the tax dollars that uh, the residents pay. So I'm not sure if you agree with that. Let me know in the comments if you do. I, obviously, crossing guards are a necessity, but I would assume the, the residents, since their kids are going to be going there. But you also, to play devil's advocate, you do have people from the county who work in the villages whose kids go to the charter school. So, and it's everybody's tax dollars, right? This here is the boathouse. They are going to do, um, supposedly there's going to be like paddle boards and things like that, that you can rent and take out on the water right here. And then you got the bridge. So another nice, interesting area. You can sit out, watch the sunset over in Middleton. It is beautiful. If you have never seen it. And so up in the background here is Moultrie Creek uh, in the distance. And that on the other side of that water, just on the other side of the football field is the Moultrie Creek and the start of Eastport. Coleman Prison would be up in the left. And you can see Eastport actually downtown up in that left-hand corner there. Now this is the front entrance to Middleton. You have Citizens First Bank there the water tower um, at the entrance, which says Middleton. And then you have the coffee shop, which is obviously a must right when you come in. This area is not filled up yet. I would suspect it will be filled in, I don't know, relatively shortly, but it is going to be a beautiful area. When this in Eastport is done, they're saying Eastport by the end of 2025, um, and I, I would assume they're projecting the same for this area. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Like I've talked about this quite a few times in other videos. I think the building has slowed down quite a bit. But uh, I mean, they're still buying, they're still going and time will tell. So anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up and uh, Subscribe if you want to see some more, and I really do appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.